Shoreline stash runs. That's it. That's the video. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. Okay, no, but really, looting Jaeger's stashes on Shoreline is to me the easiest and most convenient way to farm rubles at any level. Because unlike most other farming methods, where you have to be somewhat paying attention, or only becomes really viable once you have certain conditions met, like flea market unlock, it takes almost zero effort, and you can do it from level one. You can easily make three to four hundred k in a fifteen minute raid. Once you get used to it and know the map well, it even becomes kind of relaxing. You can put some music on in the background or listen to a podcast while you do it. But chicken, I have never. Never touched shoreline my entire life. I don't know the map. I suck at shooting. I can't do no it. No problem, little fella. If you click this video to learn how to make Tarkov ruble, then you have at least a rough understanding of how money and items work, and that's all you need. That's the beauty of these runs. Even if you're an absolute chimp, just mentally FK, straight up nobody home upstairs, you can make money. Perfect for you and me. So, with the newer players who have never touched the map in mind, I've come up with three routes that you can start from any spawn on the map, which I also go over. Think of it like kind of a choose your adventure video. You can load into a raid and look into the video's description for a spawn that fits what you see around you. Click the timestamp and you'll see a description of how to get to the start of a route. Then all you have to do is skip to the timestamp of that particular route and follow it along. That simple. Or if you're well familiarized with Shoreline, you can just skip the spawns and go straight to the routes. But before we get to business, let's talk about preparation. First thing is gearing up. A decent backpack is a must-have to maximize your profit. I'd say a Burkit or a Scav backpack is the best cost-benefit since they're cheap and you're almost guaranteed to get them back on insurance. I also recommend any chest rig you can get your hands on that is likely to come back on insurance as well, such as these. Keep some essential meds in your container too. If you have just an alpha, a painkiller, or a heavy bleed stopper in the first aid kit is plenty. If you have anything bigger, you can throw in some extra if you want. Even though I'm talking about insurance and meds, this is a very low-risk grade, which is why a gun is pretty much optional. I'd recommend a simple pistol at most to deal with pesky scavs if need be. Plus, you get to keep two primary slots open for picking up weapons. If you have a cheap suppressor you can use, this is the perfect occasion. Now, the gun is optional because the idea is a low-risk, max-money raid. If you bring a lot of gear, that's potential found items you can't pick up or just wasted insurance money. And if you die somehow, you just lost money on a money-making run. The idea is to completely ignore fights you can lose. If you see a player, no matter what kind, just go on with your day in a different direction. Dying would be such a waste of time. You already spent at the very least five minutes getting into this raid. It'll take you at the very least five more to get into another one. This dude's shitty macro is not worth it. And if he has worth all gear, that means your chances of killing him with your shitty Makarov is pretty low. You can already make money without going through this trouble. Now, if you want to go for the fights, for the thrill, fun, and experience, if you want to bring nicer gear to help you with that, you do whatever you want. In fact, I myself enjoy going for it. I'm just telling it like it is from a pure, efficient, money-making perspective, so you know what to expect. Oh, and the ice caps, on the other hand, are fair game. It's a decent opportunity to get some extra XP with headshots. Just be careful. Last but not least, I use a compass for orientation at several points of the runs. If you're good at navigating or know shoreline well, you can just line up visually instead of using the berry knowing that you can find your way back if you do end up missing the mark. However, for those who are inexperienced or get lost easily, I strongly recommend using the compass as shown in the video. You can get one as a quest reward for proper second quest of the game, search mission. Okay, that's about it. Now into the spawns. Let's start with the western ones. The village is on the southwest side of the map. It's pretty easy to recognize, just notice the houses and the fences. It can be a bit of a hot spot at the start of the raid and there's plenty of loot elsewhere. So we're gonna ignore it. If you can see the sea with no blue fence in sight, the village is straight to your north. Walk that way until you get there. Now being anywhere around the village, just head west until you hit the white wall with the barbed wire. Keep it to your left and follow it along towards the north. Once you've cleared the last house in the village, you should see this lone green house to your right. Walk up to it and look for this wooden pallet laying against its north side. You're now ready to start route number one. Secondly, Swamp Village spawns. Like in the previous ones, we're looking for this lone green house. A couple of the spawns will have it right in your view. Some others are a little trickier to differentiate from spawns elsewhere on the map. You'll be next to the white border wall of the map with the forest in front of you. To find out if you're indeed here, just run a short distance, maybe 20 meters straight away from the wall. You'll be able to clearly see the sunken village ahead. To get to the house, just keep the wall to your right and follow it along towards the south until you see it on your left. Then walk up to the wooden pallet on its north side and begin route number one. Thirdly, north and center spawns. You can recognize this if you can see the big red health resort somewhere on the horizon as you walk around. If you spawn with the radio tower to your east or under it, or close to the big dome tower and the stone arch, consider it a center spawn instead of an easter one. I'll explain why when I get to those. In any of those cases, just head north until you run into the edge of the map, which will be this rock wall after a power line. Then keep the rock wall to your right and follow it down until you hit the river. Go around across the river being careful with scav spawns in the area, then go 
back north until you're by this fence with the river on the other side. You're now ready to start route number 3. Lastly, east spawns. There's a few landmarks to help you figure out that you're here. A meteorological station with a dome on top of a rocky cliff. There's a radio tower surrounded by trees. It can't be hard to spot. Only this region of the map has red grass and pink flowers in the scenery as well. Lastly, if you're at a coastline either next to or with a blue fence in sight, you're also here. This area is somewhat dangerous early raids since spawns aren't that far apart and the more central ones are directly in the way of the rest. Which is why earlier I told you to run north if you got any of these. Because if you ran east at the start, you'd be almost guaranteed to run into people. So if you're feeling unsafe at the start, feel free to sit in the bush for a couple minutes until people have moved on. Regardless, just run straight east until you find a road with a red gate at the north end, a green tower in the middle, and another gate at the south end. If you went east and ran into this river, you already actually passed the road. Just head back west a short distance and you should get to it. Walk up to this curiously placed rock right next to the road in between the north gate and the tower and you're ready for route number two. <sighs> that was a mouthful. Now that every possible spawn in the map is covered, let's get into the routes. Okay, so we're at the greenhouse between the village and the swamp. You walked up against the wooden pallet on its north side and you're ready to start route number one. Turn around and run straight a short distance until you see this fence with wooden pallets to your right. First stash is up against it. Next up, look straight east past the fence. You'll see this house. Run towards it. Go around its other side and you'll see the stash inside the fence. Now look to the southeast and you'll see this house with the three windows. Cross the puddle and go into the spooky shack glued to it on the other side. There's your next stash. Walk back outside and look into your right then whip out your bible cause it's time to go to church. Legend says stuff spawns on the altar table but I never found it myself. Go back out through the southern door on the right from where you came in. Turn left and go into the ruined wood structure next to the church. The stash is in the back corner. Turn back around towards the back of the church, but this time run straight past it. Cross the graveyard until you reach the lake. You're looking for the one white trunk pointing west in the middle. The stash is right under it. Now you do have to be careful with scav spawning on the opposite shore, and it can be unnerving to do the slow walk in the water out in the open. Wouldn't blame you if you skip this stash entirely. By the way, that house to the left has a valuable spawn on top of the mattress if you care. Regardless, walk east out of the lake towards the little pier. Once you're out, you'll see the big cable tower up above a cliff. That's your next destination. Once there, look back west and you'll see this golden tree with a bush next to it. There's another stash under it. Now it's time to pull out your compass and set a course to around bearing 82. Run straight and once you're past these rocks, the next stash will be right under another golden tree. Be careful with scavs on your left, by the way. They will spawn and patrol around this green truck in the valley. Now pull out your compass again and set a course to bearing 28, or line up just to the left of the dome up on the mountain. This will be a longer run, but just keep going until you come around the left side of this massive rock. Once you're past, you should see these two golden trees up against the rocks. Go towards the one on the right, and the next stash will be in this bush. Home stretch now. Keep the rock wall to your left and run along. Be careful with that big rock on your right. Sniper scab spawns there, it can be a nuisance sometimes. If you can see green smoke on the other side of the river, that means rock passage is open and you can extract, which you should. To cross the river, you can go through this concrete bridge. Just be careful with scabs spawning around the bunker. Or if you're scared of the scabs, you can circle around further south and cross through this platform instead. Okay, so we're on the other side of the river. If the green smoke isn't there, you'll need to extract that road to customs instead. For that, just turn around and keep going along the rock wall to your left. There's a few stashes you can hit on the way though. Once you're past the second cable tower, you should see a golden tree up by a crevice on the rocks. Between the first two bushes to its right is the stash you're looking for. Keep following the rocks and once you run into the white wall, turn right and follow that instead. It's a bit of a long run. Eventually you'll be under a power line. Look to your right and you'll see a little canyon. Run up to the cliff on the left and you'll find a stash between two trees at the top. If you look to the southeast from here, you'll see a red radio tower. That's your next destination. Once you're there, walk along the outside of the fence until you find the stash up against it. 
a vector. Now head back towards the wall and if you want, line up the furthest pole of the tower with the ladder in the middle. Turn straight back and run down the hill. Once you're close to the wall, there will be a bunch of bushes by a tree to your left. The last stash is right up against it. From here, just keep following the wall to the east until you reach the red gate on the road. Careful with scavs spawning around this area, as you can see. Once you've dealt with or ran around them, you can extract anywhere along the wall past the red gate, all the way up to the river even. That's the end of route number one. Okay, so route number three begins with this conspicuous looking rock next to the road in between the road to customs extract and the big metal tower in the middle of the road. And right now you managed to find it, congratulations! Now whip out your compass and plot a course towards bearing around 37. Just keep walking until you hit the river. Now look at the bush a little bit north of the pointy rocks by the water to find your first stash. Next up, keep the river to your left and follow it along until you hit a beach with a bridge overlooking it. The barrel stash will be under the last pile of trunks before the bridge. Now head up to the red train above you and walk down the tracks until there's a gap between carriages. The stash will be in the grass about halfway between the two. Next up, just follow the big concrete wall. What's the sign here? Well, it's not gonna stop me, because I can't read Russian. Okay, so we're gonna heed the sign and cross the road instead. You know, better stay away from the angry sand. Okay, now once the concrete wall ends, you're gonna see an area surrounded by blue fence. Let's go inside of that. Keep following it along until you hit these cabins stacked on top of each other. The next stash is going to be behind them, between the pile of tires and the cabin up against the fence. Now if you get on top of the tires, you're going to see this big rock on the other side of the fence. Just run up to it. Go along the right side and you'll find the stash in the little cranny up against it. Okay, now, wow, Jesus, what happened to the weather? Anyway, pull out your compass and head to bearing around 66, 67, or if you want you can line up with that tree right there. Run until you're on the other side of the hill, running down, and you should see a little golden tree ahead. Next stash is right next to it, up against the tree. Now if you stand up and look around to your left, you'll see a broken down house. Just run right up against it and you'll find the stash in the corner. Okay, next up, just, uh... uh... Pull out your compass and look at bearing 56, you'll see this long pine tree. If you run to the other side of it, next stash will be in this bush. Once again, stand up and look to your left, you should see the radio tower in the distance. Next stash is right up against it, so just run towards it. And then go along the left side of the fence and you'll see the stash in the middle of this bush. Okay, now turn around and go back the same way you were going originally. And once you can see the wall clearly, look a little bit to your right and you'll see this bush with a tree sticking out in the middle of it. Next stash is right up against that tree. Next up, pull out your compass and you'll see around bearing 258, a bunch of trees in the distance. Just run right up to them. And once you get to the top of the hill, the next stash is gonna be in between these two trees. From the stash, you can see two cable towers. Just run straight up to the one on the left. And be careful walking down this hill, you can actually break your legs. The next stash is right under its closest foot. Now pull out your compass and head to bearing 336. It's gonna be a long run, but eventually you'll hit these cables again. Follow them along to the left about halfway between the two towers. Now on this set of trees to your right... Where the fuck is it? Oh, okay. Now at the end of this first set of trees, you'll see the next stash in between these two bushes right up against the rocks. 
Now this is it, the home stretch. Just keep the rocks to your right and run along until you reach rock passage. Do be careful with that rock over there. A sniper scav spawns there and he actually hits shots sometimes. If the green smoke is there, there's no need to risk what you already have. Just extract and load into another raid. Like the saying goes, you know, a, a bird in the stone is worth two with one hand or... I don't know, I can't read. If you're feeling bold, you can also cross a little wood bridge and hit this stash next to the river. You have to lay down to get to it, by the way. Now, if the green smoke is not there, that means rock passage is close and you have to go to tunnel. First, we have to cross the river. You can do that either through this land bridge next to the bunker, or you can circle around all the way back to the resort and hit this concrete pad. Once you're across, head back north past the cable tower until you're up against the fence next to the river again. From here you can either start round number 3 right from the beginning and just do the whole thing, but it would be very reasonable just to keep the edge of the map to your right and run it down until you reach the tunnel extract, hitting a couple easy stashes on the way. Depends on how good of a haul you already have. To see the easy stashes on your way out, skip to this timestamp on your screen. To start round number 3, well, I thought you'd never ask. Okay, so we're next to the fence straight across the river from Rock Passage and we're ready to start round number 3. Turn around and run along the rocks to your right until you're sandwiched between the wall and the big rock to the left. First stash is in the bush next to this golden tree up against the cliff. Next just walk up to the right side of that big rock. Then pull out your compass and plot a course to round bearing 210 or 212 and start running. Keep going until you come over a hill and see the long green truck in the field. Watch out for scavs patrolling around it. Once you're there, line up against the nose of the vehicle and look at the top of the hill ahead. That golden tree is what you're looking for. Next stash is right under it. Now look to the west and you'll see this cable tower downhill. That's our next destination. Once you're there, you'll see another golden tree at the edge of the cliff with a bush next to it. That's our next stash. It's time to go down to Sunken Village, straight west of here. You can go around the cliff or carefully elite 420 parkour down the rocks. Head west until you have the church on your left and this big lake to your right. Look for this one white trunk pointing west in the middle. Next stash is right next to it. Now on top of being painfully slow in the water, you gotta be prepared for a scav spawn on the shore ahead of you. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to skip this stash entirely. Either way, it's time to head back to the church. There's supposedly a blessed item spawn on the altar table, but I've never seen anything there. Regardless, go through the doorway across from the one you came in and turn left. Next stash is in the back corner of the ruined wood structure next to the church. Next up, walk back to the front entrance of the church. From here, turn around and follow the wood planks on the ground, keeping to the left whenever they branch. Once you walk straight into this fence, look to your left. Next stash is in the spooky little side shack of the house. Walk back out of it and look to your left. See that house perpendicular to the one you were just in? Walk straight to it. Don't mind the puddle in the way. Once you're inside the fence, turn to your right and there's the next stash. For this next one, turn around and walk up to the corner of the house. Turn right and just walk straight past the opposite corner, going around the left side of this puddle with the bridge on the way. You should see this pile of wooden planks inside some half-built fencing. Next stash is up against its western side. From here you can loot that greenhouse if you want. You can tell if people have already been inside if the front door is open. Otherwise follow that white wall to your right towards the south. The extract is just down that way, but before that, turn left when you go past this little lake and go into the opening in the fence. Go around the left side of the house and the next stash is going to be against the fence in the bush. I actually already hit this one. So uh, turn around and go back to following the wall. Once you're past the tight spot between this green truck and the wall, the next bush against it will have the last stash of the run. From here, just keep going south, go down before you hit the rocks and you'll be at your tunnel extract, ready to offload these easy rules into your crippling opioid addiction. Hooray! This wasn't my extract for this raid though. Jesus, this video took significantly longer than I thought to make, so... Hit that like, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell and all that good shit. If you enjoyed it, of course. Let me know how you feel in the comments, I love reading them and it helps with the algorithm. Watch the other videos in my channel if you're so inclined, I like them better to be honest. Also check me out on twitch.tv slash Anyway, above all, here's hoping you can make some chill, stress-free rubles from now on. Have a good time, my friend.